Chris Muller has probably gone now, I think. I spoke about it before previously. I'm pretty sure I've kind of exhausted this topic already, but I kind of wanted to go over it one last time. So as you are aware, Chris Muller has unfortunately been told to um, vacate their premises due to some uh, confusion or mess up when it comes to the planning permission. They were originally given permission to stay there for a prolonged period of time until the deal with the contractors was sorted out, then it changed their mind. And now we're in a situation where they're still trying to appeal, still trying to petition it because, you know, you never know. You fight until the last minute and it might kind of kind of come through for you. But so far, the deal is that they're going to have to vacate the premises at the end of the week. So last um, last kind of last minute.com, they set up a cocktail to a more party, which is kind of one of the premier parties at Greece Mule. I think they've done it for five years there, maybe seven. I'm not too sure. One of those kind of things. I've been there once only, but I've been to Greece Mule a few times. But um, again, great promoters, great DJs all in all, great venue and just a real mainstay of Berlin. And for me, like I mentioned in the previous podcast, it was definitely my go-to place. Uh, it was definitely my first Berlin experience uh, rocking up there. I remember precisely going there with a few friends and one of my friends hadn't concealed their vitamins in the appropriate position or appropriate place. And by the time we rocked up to the bouncer, um, and all Berlin clubs are like this. You have to kind of walk down the gangway somewhere, knock on a door, someone opens it, looks, and then closes it, opens it again. It's like a real, it's like a real kind of a theater to the actual going out, right? The fact that you can't be too drunk going up on the way there, not too high. You have to be orderly. It kind of adds to it. And once you get inside the venue, you can just let loose and kind of express yourself. It's just the most picturesque place to be for a, a dance music fan. Anyway, you rock up to the front of the door. The bouncer opens the door, lets us in, such a thing. And my friend that hasn't hit his vitamins properly, uh, <laughs> The guy basically looks at him with contempt. The bouncer, like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, you didn't, like, how, like, he looks at, he, was, he was giving a look of disrespect. Like, he didn't even try it and attempt to hide it. And he kind of just casually opens it up and just pours it all over the floor, rubs his feet all over it and tells him, you can go in now. Like, epic, epic. I remember that was my first experience in that club being like, okay, welcome to Berlin, right? Okay, cool, man. This, this is what it's like being in a Berlin spot. Um, so, yeah, great venue, great place to be in, great DJs. And just in general, just a great community they kind of built around it. And again, I love the whole idea that that is where, if you really want to see club kids, if you really want to see people going for it on a night out outside of Bergheim, that's definitely the place to be. And again, I think it's probably the best party venue in Berlin, maybe outside of Stameheads. You know, I'm not talking about techno clubs, I'm talking about just like a party venue just to go and have a good time, listen to some a wide variety of music. Um, definitely, I would advise checking out Grease Müller. Um, anyway, um, Resident Advisor put together a really cool article, a uh, last event review, which I'm always a big fan of. I think their writing is stellar. They might have gone down this whole like woke political correctness way re recently, but when it comes to writing reviews of events and shows and kind of features at the, um, what you call it, art of DJing stuff and the kind of spotlights on areas, they are no, there's no one really better than RA. And this kind of, and this review kind of really touches home for me and really speaks about the beauty of this place called Grease Mueller. So this is it. It's called Grease Mueller. Is this the end? It's on Resident Advisor. I'll link in the show notes for you guys to check out yourselves. The article says the following. Uh, this blowout Berlin, this is a, the, the blowout this Berlin club um, deserves. says the following here. Um, at around midday on Sunday, as I strolled the long path from Sonnenhau to Griesmüller for possibly the last time, the only other people in sight were the middle-aged couple who seemed unlikely patrons of the 40-hour session. But to be fair, whenever you go to Berlin or night south, especially good club nights, even in London, let me not talk too much about Berlin, in London too is the same. Um, a good sign of a really good party is packed toilets and a very diverse group, a very diverse crowd. Like, I mean, like, not in, like, colour and everyone's different. I mean, like, diverse and, like, okay, this guy works in finance. She's in this. She's, like, different ages, different ethnicities, different backgrounds, just a whole melting pot. That's where you see a really, really good raven, a really good promoter, a really good scene, a really good community. When it's just the same people, when you're all photographers, you're all stylists, you all have those um, big, chunky shoes on, you've all got weird piercings and stuff, that's when it's a bit naff. Um, I prefer it when it's a real hodgepodge of people. I'd imagine the same way with gay clubs, right? Uh, I'd imagine a good gay bar would be just all the dudes, not like a particular kind of dude, all the dudes. That what, that's what makes it more interesting. Like, oh my God, you, then you meet the love of your life and happens to be some random dude who you'd have never met. But because you have this common interest, dance music, DJing, getting fucked up, that kind of brings you together. Um, that's that's probably more beautiful than it just being a club full of... That's why I hate going to fashion week parties, right? Because it's just full of people that are into fashion. It's not, there's nothing interesting about that community at all, right? Buyers and um, agents and photographers and interns and people that have online magazines or instagram pages that's it right it's just a bit meh, it's a bit naff but when you get those people and you mix them with 
art people, you mix them with people that work in architecture, people that work in graphic design, uh, people that work in the skate world, right? That's what makes those parties more interesting. But again, it's hard to find because I don't know, the older people get, the more they just start to kind of like segue into their own little silos, into their own little kind of, um, uh, what, what do they call them? Echo chambers of kind of scenery. I would assume so. But you know, it's, it is what it is. You're older. You don't need to fuck around. I mean, let's continue with the article. With the article. Um, sure enough, uh, when they reached the door, the 48, um, the older couple bounced and muttered some few words in German and they turned around. The club's farewell party was, like my own day, barely two hours old. I wandered through the dystopian outdoor area, which is all this here as well. It's probably got the best... Greece Miller might have the best sort of like outdoor soundscape or outdoor kind of activity area in most Berlin clubs. It's so cool. Um... What am I thinking of? Maybe the other one is probably quite cool. Maybe Club Division there because it's on literally on the on the canal as well with the kind of decking outside. That might be quite cool. Bar 25 I didn't end up going to. Maybe um, Cata Blue as well is quite nice on the outside. But I quite like Grease Miller with the whole like jungle gym thing and the planks outside. I think it's really, really cool. Anyway, it continues on here. Instead, the place was rocking. In, Grease Miller, in true Grease Miller style, the previous night's CTM event had bled into Sunday morning, meaning Winter Garden, the scrappy wooden shed, which is this bit here. Um, tacked onto the main building was alive and well oh ravers pumping house and again um, that's one of the best things I love about these Berlin places they have this little makeshift wooden shack on the outside and then purposely put all these windows that are mirrored and some are covered some are not some are fragmented so that when the sunrise and this, the kind of light is spinning through or seeping through the windows you get this amazing refraction and these lights and these kind of tones going off and I remember just sitting on the edge or standing on the edge of the window as it's kind of beaming past your ears and it's kind of warming up the back of your ears and you get this tingling feeling from all the magnesium you've been having. It's just amazing, man. I flip and love it. Um, it continues on here. A nervy pick into silo, the club's uh, subterranean, while Oid Ravis pumping house. A nervy peek into silo. Yeah, da, da. This was the club's goodbye note to their friends and family, naming a dozen DJs and promoters who, until news broke of its inevitable close, called it home. Each crew was given a two-hour slot, which is perfect. I think it's quite hard to do those kind of like... I remember I did it when I went to play the birth, you know, the alibi closing party. You did like an hour, other two. It depends. It's quite hard to do it well because um, everyone's kind of playing a meld of music. But it continued on here. Um, at some point, at come eight, no, sorry. So um, they all got two hours, which meant regular switches in genre, a detail that could have derailed the vibe, but actually kept things fun and fresh. Across 10 or so hours in Winter Garden, people flexed uh, to Loopy House by Meld, UK Garage Hits by Operate, a Sleazy EMB, and Italo by Idiotech. Uh, techno and trance and ear splitting gabber dominated once the sun went down at some point in the main room one of the techno kids lads uh, honestly played one of the most anxiety inducing tunes i've ever heard two of my friends scattered in fear i love that i love the fact that they play the most wild shit like you can hear classical music on the main burkheim dance floor and you can also hear stuff like that imagine being in berlin and something make you run away from the dance floor. must be really really bad but that's the beauty of it right uh, come 5 p.m at all three rooms all the toilets and numerous crooks and cameras are rammed what i said earlier um my time on sunday which after i left turned into monday and even tuesday showed how beloved grease media is not for any one dj or party but as a space which definitely agree which is this this is part of the reasons i have such an issue with um london spaces somehow because it's great that we have such a good community of um i was just looking online of um what are they called uh minority is it called um ah oh, is it asian minority what it's called there's a, a party promoter group who I met when I went to actually the London, uh, the Resident Advice London community meetup, and she puts on these um nights that are specifically geared or specifically catered towards showcasing the talents of Asian artists, South Pacific. Uh, in I don't know how you refer to them, but Southeast Asia, right? That kind of segment, and they get some cool people involved. So she's an amazing promoter. That whole thing that they do is great, right? So we have a real good promoter base i think we have probably the best promoters maybe in europe in terms of like putting the show together flyer marketing activation announcement just ingenuity um production but we just don't have the spaces to kind of house them so what you you're going to club nights you're going to origins you're going to half baked you're going to all these club nights all these promoter nights but you're not going to the space that they're operating in just for the night out that's the issue i have with it in london um, we have some spaces like print works and stuff or maybe fold is one of the only exceptions but for the most part you're going for promoters you're not going for clubs and that's the disappointing thing whereas you go to Berlin you're going you don't most of the time when you go to Griezmann you don't know who's playing until you get there right and you see the lineup you just rock up and you know it's gonna have a good you know have a good time so again a real shame that it's going um 
it continues here. Um, it's a, such a it's such a sick club with so many cool details. The walk away overlooking the main room, the treehouse fire pit, and those random shacks. The silo, arguably one of the best dance floors on the planet. I definitely agree with this um, writer. Uh, sitting by the canal on the summer's day without a care in the world. To lose all this is a massive shame. A real blow to Burns nightlife. So if you're going to Cocktail Dome more this weekend, thought it will be the final uh, final ever event at this wonderful New Orleans club. Make sure you save it. This is written by a guy called Carlos Holfen. So definitely check it out. Really cool article. Um, and again, just sad, man. Sad, sad state of affairs, isn't it? For everyone involved. Um, I don't know what they... I hope, again, I think the only saving grace of this is that somehow this is a kind of wake-up call for the scene in Berlin, which I don't sure if they need one, but in terms of just understanding the climate, knowing how to kind of battle these kind of things, because Griezmann is one of the mainstays. It's not as if like this is like a pop-up. It's not as if this is like... Remember that club Libertines? I'm not sure if it's still open in Berlin for a while. Had like a short little run. Um, it's not a club like that. It's like an, a legit Berlin nightlife establishment, right? And it's being knocked down. It's been told to F off. So maybe there is something, some kind of lack of communication or organization within the nightlife community where they kind of need to band together and make sure it doesn't happen to any other club, right? We, don't, we can't have these, we can't have it falling by the wayside the same way London has. It probably won't because nightlife in Berlin brings in too much money. They won't let it go that far. Um, there's only so many, like, I'm sure most of the, Keys comes from the actual Berlin underground clubs as opposed to the ones that are in Mitte and stuff or Mitte or like Kreuzberg. I'd imagine so. Most of them come from the actual ones that are in the ghetto, which makes sense. So I'd imagine they couldn't, they wouldn't kind of go down the London path, but you know, stranger things have happened. So hopefully this is a wake up call for the community. Everyone kind of gets active, activated and tries to take part and make sure we don't have this happen again. And hopefully it's also a chance for the Greece Media team to maybe uh, up sticks and go somewhere new, right? Fresh, fresh vision, fresh place. I would be interested to see what they do with a new space, where they house it, temporary spaces, new spaces. I don't know, but again, shame it's gone. Uh, but hopefully, we have a new uh, spaces coming up from the doldrums when they decide where to go next. Um, there's actually I went to actually see what's the if people have been posting anything about Greece Miller on Instagram because I like doing this on Instagram quite often, just going on there and doing the location search. And you get some clips and videos from people that have been there. Uh, let's just go through it here. Boom, boom, boom. There's a, on here, there's no real stories. I know. Let's just go through and check. People are writing all their posts on here. Resident Advisor, another post there that I'm gonna, not going to read there. Last call here from um, Hector Oaks, of course. Big fan of him. Uh, last call. Last minute call selecting the 50 records that will soundtrack one of the last slots of the history of Grace Miller with other legends. Overexcited. See you in. Oh, that's really good, isn't it? Imagine that. Picking 50 records that you think are going to smash up the Grace Miller. Amazing. That's that's part of the fun of DJing, though, isn't it? Sitting down with your records and actually selecting the stuff that you want to play. So, yeah. Big up head to Oats. It's a powerful haircut, isn't it? Love your studio, man. Madness. So, he's obviously bemoaning the fact that it's going to go. Who else we got here? We've got uh, it's an old photo from DJ Heidi. <sighs> Uh, Butch has also got an old post on there. Eclair Fifi supposed to be having a month off, but I can't couldn't turn away uh, from this at like, Grease Miller. It might be the last time I'll ever get to DJ a party here. Please go and sign a petition to stop it closing. The party starts tonight. Oh, right, Eclair Fifi played there too, which is great. She's she's smashing it lately as well. Um, who else is playing? Loads of loads of good posts here from people. Hugo Boss did a shoot there recently. What's this? Prosper talking about it. Another people with stamp. The stamps might be something to save them, man. Might have to get that tattooed on you. To be fair, I would actually recommend it. Some someone. I don't necessarily. I don't necessarily agree with the pictures in the toilet. I don't think they're a good look because usually the people in the toilets are high off their mind, as you can see from these two young ladies. But you know, c'est la vie. The last cocktail was popping up as well. Um, so yeah, definitely check it out, man. This is a bittersweet moment for everyone involved. I'm sure. They're going to sign it out in style. I'm sure everyone's going to come out and really kind of give it the going away present that it deserves. And yeah, man, a real shame. A real shame, man. One of the, again, that picture there with the lady sitting on the floor is a real good operator. It's a way to see how amazing and interesting it looks as a venue. It kind of reminds me of what Bar 25 would have been like back in the day because I never got a chance to go to it. Um, I think I, I went to Berlin just after Bar 25 had closed, so I kind of missed that magical moment everyone speaks about so highly, but it kind of reminds me of what Bar 25 would have been. The community, like, it, it, the, it's the sum of its parts, right? The, it, like, the people that went there kind of made the space what it is. Um, and again, sitting on the canal, smoking a cigarette. Like, it, this is one of the prime places I end up smoking, where I don't even smoke cigarettes, but you end up going to Greece, you end up going to Berlin and just end up coming back coughing like an absolute drug head. Because you've been smoking, pretending you're a bad boy when you're not really. You know what I mean? It's a bit, it's a bit cringe. What can you do? But yeah, this infamous gang where they walked down. Just, just a real shame, man. Real shame is kind of disappearing. A real shame won't be around anymore. And again, for everyone else involved, there's a little video from Grace Miller. Definitely play it now. 
You know what I like too? The fact that there's lack, there's a lack of light and illumination on the DJ booth. It's just him playing, right? That's it. Fucking cool. Just everyone dancing, head down, moshing. Yeah. Definitely check them out, man. If you're, if you're around this weekend. Um, Goose Mula, Cocktail Del One Last Time. One Last Time.